you're listening to Journaling with PT. I am your host, artist PT Russell. Welcome back if you've been listening. And if you're new, welcome to the podcast. Today I have Evan Folk of Moose Motion Studios joining me today as co host as we count down our top five stop motion films of all time. Thank you for joining us and enjoy. Welcome to the Journaling with PT podcast. Today I have a co-host and his name is Evan Folk of Moose Motion Studios. You would have been introduced to him if you were listening before in episode five about stop motion and whatnot. Hello, Evan. Hi. Hey, PT. Happy to be back. Awesome. And today we're rounding out our top five stop motion films of all time. Well, I five. think you actually picked more stop motion <laughs> films than I did going over the list. Yeah, briefly here, to be quite honest. But <laughs> yeah, but I thought it would be fun, something different. And I also want to have you back on because we got a lot of positive feedback uh, about our conversation that we've had earlier in, uh, well, that would have been in 2023, October 2023. And what have you seen recently? Oh, a couple movies actually, mainly for this Mm -hmm. podcast. So it was kind of nice to actually sit down and watch movies for enjoyment for a change, I must admit. (laughs) Um, Minus One was really cool. I got to see that in theaters. Uh, My very few complaints. And it seems to be doing very well in reviews as well. Like, Mm -hmm. I think the only the only issue there would be if you're not exactly too familiar with Godzilla's backstory, which a lot of people aren't. It might be a bit of a shock in that sense, just because you're not he's usually seen as kind of a silly save the world character by most people right and in this case he's definitely not betraying that he is quite quite the opposite so it's kind of nice to see him return to his original origins in my opinion so i quite enjoyed it yeah i saw the trailer and i have to tell you i I really want to watch that film now oh yeah the the trailer once you uh, if you piece things together from the trailer and you watch mm-hmm. the film, it ties in together so nicely. It, it, yeah, there's a couple moments that made my jaw definitely drop. I was like, oh, no way. I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. So. I, but it will, you know, the part that they show, it's not like I'm spoiling anything because it's out there. It's everywhere. It has millions of views. Yeah, exactly. And it's with the spikes, the, uh, the kind of like popping out. Oh, that out. jut out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the, the, the atomic breath that comes across the whole city. <laughs> it's no, like, not okay. going to lie. When I saw that, <laughs> the second trailer i had mixed feelings about it because of the Mm. spikes jutting out because i had already sculpted my stop motion doll for minus one right i was like oh no i didn't add this detail but i mean it was before this and then no one knew about it oh no (laughs) so i mean that's happened before i remember when i redid uh my tyrannosaurus rex within two months the yeah, it was like, hey, uh, announcement, it doesn't have feathers. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I'm giving my dinosaur a haircut now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty neat. But yeah, I definitely have to watch that. It's at the top of my list now for in terms of like action, de- definitely Godzilla films. And so I have to see that everyone's talking about it and, you know, the kind of spoiling. I'm trying to stay away from spoilers as much as possible. Oh, yeah, so that's that, kind was of, diffi- that was difficult yeah. for me, too, because I wanted to see mm-hmm. it when it first released. I'm like, I don't have time. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and what I did catch up with was Rebel Moon. It's on Netflix, so it's a Zack Snyder bit, and I, it's entertaining. I heard a lot of negative feedback <laughs> on that one. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they, for whatever reason, it's it, the CGI didn't quite work for them, or they, the story was not enough, or it's it's kind of um, robbing and stealing uh, from from the Star Wars films yeah. or Star oh. Trek or whatever. But I, it, to me, it was very entertaining. I enjoyed it. And I am looking forward to part two. So if you want something just for sheer entertainment, not critical acclaim, I'd say give it a shot. And uh, yeah. And, well, and check my it out. big opinion on that one is that sometimes it's not always personally best to go off what the critics are always saying, because mm-hmm. it might just kind of ruin the experience for you at that point, too. Right. It's almost better to kind of, if you're a fan, just go off what they're saying, because those are the people that are truly dedicated to 
what they're watching, right? So mm-hmm. absolutely. So it's a good it's a good watch, and it's there on Netflix. If anybody's interested, they can check it out. And I think you'd be you know quite captivated by its lead, and that's Cora and her adventures. And she is a tough cookie, I'm telling you. So it's uh, great. Cora, yeah. that's an interesting name. We'll have something similar popping up later. That's for sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> Foreshadow. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get right into our top five. All right. With you, Evan, what is your top five stop motion film or a film that has a stop motion sequence? Well, okay. Two of them technically aren't stop motion. One mm-hmm. was related to the extinction of stop motion. So that's kind of why it was my pick. I, I have mixed feelings about the film. I personally really love it. It's one of my favorites. But mm-hmm. just knowing what it did to stop motion is a little like uh, heartbreaking on my end in particular, obviously. Right. But the mission is probably one of my favorite films of all time. It's extremely sad. It's a special. It's basically about the South American being taken over like the colonization right and it's just it, it there's no happy ending in there it's one of those films that i'll continuously watch back again and again and it's always sad but it's just well really well put together story and it's all based off a true one and i just think it deserves more notoriety than it actually really gets that's mm-hmm. yeah the big one for me i think that's great film not stop motion related but just spectacular all around so and where can folks watch the, the mission if they were interested? It is a harder one to find because it is oh. old. It's from like 1986, but I have mm-hmm. found a few few on YouTube and you can rent it there actually. So it, I definitely recommend it. Like it's mm-hmm. it's very, very influential. Like it, it, it's it, the music too. Honestly, the mm-hmm. symphony is just great. Like I, I have the soundtrack on my playlist. I listen to it from oh, time wow. to time, to be honest. Like it's just, yeah, amazing. Yeah, I like soundtracks a lot. Scores, yeah, uh, I find myself listening to a lot of movie tracks lately. I'm not sure what it is about them, but <laughs> the symphony ones, oh, just mm-hmm. the, the yeah. way they hit the emotions, it's just perfect, I think, especially for film genres. Yeah, and my uh, number five would be The Isle of Dogs, a film from 2018 and written and directed by Wes Anderson. That is I... definitely, I, I haven't seen it. I've seen so many sneak peeks and I want to. I've kind of spoiled it for myself to a degree already, but. <laughs> I'll try not to give too much of it away. Oh, don't worry. Yeah, I've yeah, already, yeah. I've already gone over lots of it. So yeah, the, the, I remember seeing it in my mm-hmm. YouTube feed. and I was like, Ooh, what's this stop motion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. That's how your eyes are trained. Already. Yeah, pretty much. Like, Ooh, I recognize those are handmade dolls any day. Yeah, exactly. So the film draws inspiration, I guess, in terms of its stylistic choices from Japanese uh, j- filmmakers, um, Akira Kurosawa, I'm sure you're familiar with him, and yeah. Heo Miyazaki, and just uh, kind of borrows those uh, elements from, from those filmmakers. And it just kind I believe of like one of the directors from The Nightmare Before Christmas was on that film too, wasn't he? Uh, quite possibly. I'm pretty Quite sure possibly. he. I'm pretty sure he was because I remember kind of doing a bit of research before this, and yeah, mm-hmm. his name popped up a couple times. And there's a few little like hidden Easter eggs in particular that kind of tie those in. So it's yeah, mm-hmm. that's the one thing I love about stop motion films. There's always a ton of Easter eggs, and you know they're not doing it by mistake, considering how how painstaking of a process it is, right? Yeah, so just for, for those who are not who have never heard of the Isle of Dogs, it's about some dogs who are banished to a trash heap island, sort of after a breakout of a canine type of flu. A boy named Atari takes a plane, and what does he do? He goes to the Isle of Dogs to look for his dog Spot. I would do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I love about the film? I mean, I just love the integration of the different mediums, uh, like the puppetry. There's like puppetry in there. It's two D animation. Uh, just all of these different elements. It, it seems like they use some real life uh, objects and, and miniatures and just all of, just a whole uh, combination of all of these things together. It just works so well for me. There's also a recurring drum beat that plays throughout the, the you know, the, the film. It's uh, just like um, these big drums. I, I don't know what they're called right now, but anyway, the score for this is great as well. Although you can hear the boom, 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 whatever throughout the film. Yeah, but... yeah. The, the, I heard there was a lot of positive feedback on that, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it kind of went with the heartbeat a lot of the time, apparently. 
Yes, yes, yes. And then the the, the handcrafted feel, like you'd mentioned, look like dolls. That is the thing that kind of drew me in. I just love that element. Yeah, they had it, like over yeah, can, 100 mm -hmm. artists apparently on that entire team. And only yeah. 13 animators. Like it wasn't a very big cast of animators, which I found kind of surprising. Yeah, so that is... That I love dogs, my number four, and my number five. We're on to number four, and your number four. <laughs> what <laughs> is your number four? <laughs> my number four is the Nightmare Before Christmas, mm -hmm. and definitely a classic, especially for around oh, this yeah. time of year. I think most Absolutely. people are watching that one. I love, I love Tim Burton. Is his style is just great, to be honest. So, yeah. and, and it's got a very interesting backstory as to how it actually started. Like, it's the thing I like about it. It's not exactly either either or genre for like Halloween or Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's about that in between stage. Yes. And that's what inspired the film directly was apparently he was out shopping one day and he saw a bunch of the, uh, like the staff essentially switching out like the Christmas props or the Halloween props for Christmas. And he was like, Hmm. And that's basically what entirely inspired the whole film was him just seeing a bunch of people like swap over like christmas decorations and apparently made a few poems and stuff like that about it so it was mm -hmm. quite quite interesting and honestly the entire process of just how how much work that went into that film was just crazy like i think he had close to like 400 heads or something crazy like that like each different mouthpiece like each frame had he had to get his head swapped out entirely it's mm -hmm. just I, I kind of wish I had the that amount of like manpower so I could have that many heads because I have my own little mini Jack skeleton, which I made a few heads, but it's just like, oh, God, 400. <laughs> Yours is pretty uh, neat, too, though. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely have. I think what I'll have to do at some point is when I, a Christmas special do like the 100 heads of Jack Skellington or something like that and just do a, a build montage of a bunch of Jack Skellington faces, basically. Oh, that should be a lot of fun. But of course, I love his suit. I love oh, the songs. I, the songs are his you know, suit. Yeah, his suit yeah. is great. Like either either one. Like especially when his Santa suit just becomes all in tatters because that kind of symbolizes more than one thing at that point. Just because mm -hmm. he's ruined everything. So yeah, fantastic yeah. film. Uh, uh, it's Absolutely. one of those yeah classics that anybody can go back to. I think, and you always see like you always see Jack Skellington pop up everywhere around those times of year. I find. Yeah, I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, okay, I'm going to watch this again and again and again, because you can tell it has a kind of quality to it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, apparently, every minute took about one week, and there was, like, 200-plus puppets for each one. It was, yeah, a massive mm -hmm. undertaking. And, wow. and Disney didn't actually really want to go through with it, believe it or not, quite a few times. They were like, yeah, mm -hmm. this is a little dark. I don't know if we're going to, yeah, do this. And, yeah, <laughs> I think it was a good thing that it became the massive success that it did, because kind of proves them wrong so it's like yay because yeah i don't mind disney cartoons but it's nice to see mm -hmm. something different personally yes absolutely so the next uh, uh film in my list is not a stop motion uh movie well it's it, a it, mixture <laughs> it is the terminator 1984 directed by james cameron's and yeah so and stars of mr arnold schwarzenegger <laughs> Uh, as the Terminator and uh, the basic plot of the film I think for those who haven't have never seen or heard of it which I can't imagine but it's probably some people out there who have never heard of Terminator yeah, it'll um, be, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, you're living under a rock at that point <laughs> <laughs> so, some people are not into sci-fi like we are but anyways yeah that's true yeah. I mean I haven't seen a lot of movies myself because I'm always so busy too right but mm -hmm. yeah so the for the Terminator, the basic plot uh, it follows a cybernetic soldier from the future, year 2029, as he goes back in time to 1984 to find and kill Sarah Connor before <laughs> she gives birth to the world's last hope, right? Uh, his mission is interrupted by Kyle Reese, who challenges the Terminator. So that's basically the basic story. And I, I could remember the first time I saw this and I saw this, well, like the Terminator came first and there's this music that's throbbing like a heartbeat. And I was like, oh, is this a horror? Is this sci-fi? What is this? <laughs> you know, it was so the, terrifying. The, heart, the heartbeat <laughs> symbolizes part of the inspiration, hey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, apparently he was, I can't remember the name of the film, but he was uh, working on some other sets and uh, he... He was in South America somewhere and he ended up catching some really nasty fever and mm -hmm. basically having a nightmare about some cybernetic robot trying to chase him down in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. And it, that's what entirely inspired the film. It's like, oh, he got yes. sick and that's how, that's right. how he came up with the idea. I think that's yes, crazy. From a, 
Yeah, from a dream. Yeah. Yeah, that I find that very fascinating. But uh, this is one of the few films that, you know, terrified me and fascinated me at the same time. I don't know. It's just something about it. But the uh, stop motion sequence, uh, well, there are actually two. Uh, one somewhere in the middle without giving it away. I don't think, I think a lot of people have seen it already, but there's a scene in the washroom, bathroom. Oh, where no, the Terminator... that, that's apparently like a uh, animatronic. Yeah, it's animatronic. Yeah, yeah that, that, that scene in there is animatronic. Yeah, they had just... like a good combination of like mm-hmm. animatronic puppets. And apparently they had like a full size one that was like six two. Yes. <laughs> and it was like, mm-hmm. what is 200 pounds at over right. a thousand moving parts? Just kind of, oh, that would have been, a, that would have been a cool job, but I would imagine that been a bit of a nightmare to work on at the same time. Like, ooh. yeah, yeah. So, and the, the, towards the ending of the film, after the explosion with the 18 wheeler. Yeah. And, when he's, and, when he's crawling around by one arm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, th- what happens is it's all of his, flesh and uh is blown off <laughs> Basically, <laughs> being too graphic that's what yeah happens. it's it's hard not to with that film yeah and then you just see this uh, this uh, uh, uh that's a skeleton the iron steel whatever he's made out of <laughs> he's just kind of Honestly, rising though, these red eyes <laughs> what the gory parts of it what made it very captivating like this the surgery scene in particular that you brought up like mm-hmm. uh, uh yeah uh that one brings me to the edge of my seat every time it's just mm-hmm. it's so gross but you can't look away at the same time it's like oh yeah (laughs) yeah so that scene at the end where he rises up because they're taking this sigh of relief um kyle is and and sarah is like oh my god it's finally over and then behind them the terminator is rising up like turn around (laughs) oh yeah i mean (laughs) Seeing it a few times, I, you're just sitting there waiting for him to come back up the entire time. You're like, yeah, he's not done. <laughs> yeah, I, and the T, so the T, the T T eight hundred, he gets up and he starts to obviously pursue them. To he's not finished yet, and he's limping there across. But anyway, that particular sequence where he's limping, he follows them into the factory. Yeah, All that's that when he is, says his famous line too. Apparently, that could have been "I will come back" or not "I will be back." Like during right. the truck explosion, I was like, "What? No, I can't believe yeah. that 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 does not have the same intimidation." Apparently, Arnold hated hated that line too. Hey, yeah, but that is um, the stop motion, and they, I believe, they use animatronics, rear projection techniques, and mm-hmm. some pup. There was some puppetry with oh, the, the one with the with the, the last scene, the last scene. Yeah, uh, the big robot where it's going like the flashback, I think is what you're talking about. No, I, I was talking about that scene towards the end when all of his, uh, all of the flesh is blown off, basically in the explosion. And oh, okay, he's pursuing yeah. them into the factory. That's towards, uh, leading towards the end when the T-800 comes in and he's trying to get Sarah. And then obviously what happens to Reese, we know what happens to Reese. And uh, and then the next, well, Reese blows him up, but he's still using his arms. All those sequences they were using uh, st- stop motion uh, well they had to kind of experiment and use create technology for whatever it, it is they were going for and I just it just continues to be something that is I have never seen done and not just seen it done before but in such a way that is like I said terrifying it, and fascinating at the same time it's hard to believe that it's cl- classified as a B movie as far as I'm concerned I, I, mm. I yeah I was like what <laughs> okay and I personally wouldn't have considered it that whatsoever like it's a great story like it's Absolutely. very very different like and fun fact about like the you know the one with the big uh, robots fighting in the background hey mm-hmm. yeah that that scene apparently costs so much money if they went one second over like the scheduled time they would have mm-hmm. went over budget with their film. Wow. Yeah, yeah. but it, it, that was such a cool shot. I honestly kind of wish they almost had, you know, just that one second more. <laughs> yeah. I, I personally would have enjoyed it, but I understand. Like, yeah, very expensive process to do all that stuff. And uh, it just entire film looked really cool, especially the stop motion parts. Like, I love yes. that. Like, yeah, they, but, I mean, there's only a short sequence, right? But no, but it blends mm-hmm. so well. Like, originally they were going to do almost a C3PO design for them, which I just can't mm. see being yeah yeah it wouldn't it's... have been the same no it wouldn't have looked at... yeah just i think there would have been a lot of memes about that at this point you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> it would have been definitely classified as the b movie that it probably was thought out to be originally in comparison so yeah. i'm definitely yeah. glad they went with the higher budget like animation at the time because that that definitely paid off 
Yeah, well, that so that yeah, that particular sequence towards like uh, towards the end with uh, T eight hundred, definitely my favorite part of the the movie, and all also the, the I guess this ominous percussion of the Terminator theme music is equally as frightening. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, at the beginning when the letters are coming together, and then again at the end when it's like boom 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 boom. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just yeah. Um, yeah. What one of the like very eighties, but it suits it so well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that is that the Terminator, and now we're on to dun 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 number three, just like that. What's your number three, Evan? Four line, keeping with the creepy theme. <laughs> <laughs> so I... yeah, another stop motion film. Obviously, a lot of people are very familiar with that one. Uh, Leica was the big production studio for that, and. Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen much of their work, their films are always fantastic as far as I'm concerned. And I've only kind of recently discovered them, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing a lot of deep dives into Leica. They're a very cool studio, but to keep things on topic for Coraline. It's basically based off a book and I'm almost kind of thankful our mics weren't working yesterday because it gave me the opportunity to do an actual comparison on the book versus the movie. Right. I think that's the one time where it's, actually very accurate to what mm. the book inflicts the only real big difference is there is an added character which is the uh, the boy the name is escaping me right now mm. shoot i can't remember but yeah the the other boy the male character like her friend basically in the other world and very she he he's not actually in the book but right apart from that the story is pretty much on cue with what the book is trying to tell you I think the book is obviously a lot scarier. <laughs> like, uh, it's, I don't know if you've checked out the book, but I no, definitely. No, but I enjoyed the film for sure. Oh, it's you like, yeah, you'd enjoy the book too. It's, mm-hmm. it, it, it's very graphic too. So it's one of those things where I unfortunately probably can't talk, talk too much about it. But a lot of the, I think what inspired them to do it in stop motion was the way the book describes some of the other mother's characters in particular mm-hmm. being these like weird clay Mm, weird doughy sort of characters that are kind of always moving around it something doesn't quite seem right with them right so that's exactly Mm -hmm. why they went with the stop motion because apparently it was going to be live action and i'm just kind of really thankful that it didn't go that route because it just ended up being a fantastic film and i think a big part of it has to do with the way Leica does a lot of their their camera work it's all robotic arms pretty much that are controlling these things so like a good example like when which we call it they're all having dinner at, in the other world mm-hmm. this, this is, probably sounds like a very strange conversation if you're out of context <laughs> <laughs> i know right yeah but uh, the camera basically zooms in and cuts through like one of the cakes that the train's basically going around and it's just like oh wow and i remember watching that for the first time and having no idea how they achieve these types of shots and immediately going to how this studio did it and i'm like oh okay this makes a lot of sense but Overall, just great film. Ton of Easter eggs in that. Jack Skellington is in that mm-hmm. one, I believe, and actually one of the uh, eggshells that the other mother cracks. Yeah. So, great film. Uh, what should I call it? Uh, there's a few other things I think I got about here. Yeah, that pretty much covers it. Yeah, I, one of my favorite scenes is the is the reveal. If no one's seen it before, I mean, I don't know if I want to give it away about the mom and how she finds out that they that something really creepy is going on when the mother just turns around and you look in her face and, and then you see the, the buttons. Oh, the buttons. <laughs> yeah. That, that does, uh, the first time I saw that, I it jumped out of my skin. I was like, Oh my goodness. I knew it was coming. Yeah. But I, you I, know, I never I had a fear of buttons, but that, that movie definitely makes you kind of weary <laughs> about them at that point. It was like, Ooh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. It's just, yeah. So, yeah. so Coraline is definitely sets a good the tone one. perfectly. Yeah. Definitely check out the book. That's also, also available oh, yeah. on YouTube. You can check out the audio book. It's only like three hours long. So. Yeah. I think I'm not sure where, I, I should have mentioned where the Terminator was. That's on uh, Amazon Prime if someone's interested in watching that. And then Coraline, I think I've seen, I think it's also on Amazon Prime, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think the Isle of Dogs is probably the only one that's going to be really challenging for people to find. Isle, Isle of Dogs is on Disney. Me. It's on is Disney. It? Oh, yeah. Okay, Disney Plus. Yeah. I've never had Disney, Disney, so. Yeah. So and let's, I might yeah. have to try get the free trial, watch the stop motion. And then... <laughs> <laughs> this does the fantastic Mr. Fox as well. So you yeah, yeah, that's right. I yeah, forgot to do that film. 
apparently the 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 isle of dogs was praised a lot better than the mr fox one i remember seeing that and i thought it was very unique i quite enjoyed that mm-hmm. wes anderson again etc et yeah yes so. mm-hmm. yeah and so we're on to dun, dun, my uh, number three which is the clash of the titans and that's a film directed by desmond davis uh back in 1981 so i think it's uh definitely one of the older ones here uh and uh i think but, it is yeah definitely, mm-hmm. i think it is the oldest fantasy adventure uh so it's not to be mistaken with the 2010 version uh and i mean this film really stands the I, test I watched of time. both actually so mm-hmm. yeah they were both pretty good movies in yes all, honesty. yes uh, the original would oh, you know, always have a, a pl- I can't say the, the original, well, but the earlier version would always have, uh, you know, have a place in my heart. Uh, yeah, that's the first one I'd seen, and uh, you know, I think they did a great job of with the characterizations and the actor, obviously, you know, they had CGI, etc. But before CGI, yeah, there it, was... it was mostly uh, projection screen work for that one. I think like cross mm-hmm. projection with a lot of the stop motion in the characters. I think the the style of very on point to uh what's the that other movie called jason and the argonauts yeah so yeah th- th- yeah absolutely jason and the argonauts uh but i think i for me i can definitely consider the clash of titans it is a stop motion classic next to king kong and jason argonauts those those three to me they you know they're all in, in company uh with each other the, in terms of uh them being classics right i'm surprised um, uh yeah mm-hmm. king kong never made it on either of our lists considering the amount of monster content that i do <laughs> yeah but you know another time another time it's yeah, in my top exactly. it's in my top 10 for sure I mean, quick fun fact godzilla was originally supposed to be a stop motion character but then the mm-hmm. studio found out how long it was going to take and they were like nope <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, anyone listening who's interested in the Clash of the Titans uh, story, basic plot, we follow Perseus. Perseus is a son of Zeus and his quest to free his beloved Andromeda, uh, you know, who's captured by Calibos. And so, yeah, that, that's basically what it's about. And during this time, he, he has to, to ward off all of these uh, creatures, uh, mythological creatures and monsters. And yeah, those this is are where really this, cool. Right, and this is where the most of the stop motion element uh, is, and model animation is involved. And most of that was directed by uh, Ray Harryhausen. Yeah, yeah, um, that's the same mm-hmm. guy that did uh, Jason mm-hmm. and the Argonauts. Yep. I, and, I, I, I've heard mm-hmm. a quite, if I got a dollar for every time I heard that in my comment section. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what, you know, one of the things that I enjoyed, I mean, my first time watching, I didn't really know what was going on, but I was like, okay, because I had the action live shots and, and, and the stop motion, they were integrated and it, yeah, it, it looked Harry, a little jumpy. Harry is one of the best at that. Like mm-hmm. uh, it's something about his style that crosses over very well. Yes. And so a, a few of the notable scenes that uh, incorporated these, these stop motion sequences would have been the scorpions unleashed by calibos then the 2010 film did a really good job on that that sequence that was really cool yeah they didn't use stop motion i don't believe whether no that that was all that was all cgi obviously Mm -hmm. but uh, i remember seeing those and i was just like okay that was yeah yeah and so they crawl they crawl out of this bag they're really small then they get bigger and then they start whipping their tails around and and then he spares them he kills them and then calabos himself there is a the, well, the, calabos was in a student is all dressed up and then he's also a stop motion uh figure that they animate later uh and huh. and so for, at certain angles when like it seems like this is just me in my layman's eyes from a distance he you can see there's a stop motion but there's a close-up is a person with the, the makeup and looking like the devil <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> really scary and, and evil uh, he's, uh yeah, and uh, people are he's very a... very hard to make because everyone recognizes yeah. what a person faces right right and but if he's you a... make a mistake it's like ooh. yeah but calabos is a satyr so he um he's on hoofed feet and and he has a tail and just really evil and he's red so i think it just to, for me it added to the, the i guess the the, the the creepiness of the, the character because it looked so real but the movements were a little bit you know in retrospect a little bit jerky 
Yeah, like, you mm-hmm. got that stop motion feel to it. I think that's why stop motion does so well in the horror genre in particular, because mm-hmm. it just kind of has that unsettling, right? Exactly, unnatural movement to it that you're like, uh, I can't yeah. quite put my finger on what's going on here. <laughs> so, so when he's whipping Perseus, uh, well, se- well, trying to whip him, and uh, you, the, the movements you can tell they're different from when there's a close up and he's just like kind of gritting his teeth, and I just, I just like that. I, I enjoyed that sequence, and of course, one of the bigger moments for me and one of the scariest especially when i was a child and i watched this film was when he ha- came head to head with the gorgon who's medusa and uh, you couldn't oh, look at her yeah. you know, the story with medusa you, c- you can't look her in the eyes you're gonna talk or you're gonna turn to stone that animator had a lot of lot of long long days ahead of him with all yeah. those snakes as a lot of moving mm-hmm. things <laughs> oh god and then her face and then they did the close-ups her eyes were spooky and she's looking around for someone to look at her because you know she wants to freeze them and turn them to stone and i, I just that whole uh but I, I can't remember precisely where they were what it's called what they were in but uh she had just killed a couple other people just looking at them they were staring at her they didn't look away and they turned to stone um but anyways he ends up uh killing her <laughs> yeah <laughs> taking her head <laughs> and uh and he did it and future I, uses yes Exactly. So when he would have faced the the Kraken, um, when he was say when he was about to save Andromeda. Anyways, it, the the Kraken itself it reminded me a lot of Godzilla itself because it's just something about how the body is shaped. I'm not sure exactly what they did with the the stop motion with that, but it did look real at the time. Uh, and of course, in comparison to to later films, you can see where it's where it stops. But that particular yeah. sequence with the uh, with the Kraken and then Pegasus flying around because Pegasus is also a stop motion, and uh, it just looked real. And she was diving into the water and coming back up and and whatnot. So there, that is that's the clash of the Titans. And I wasn't, I haven't been able to find it anywhere. Uh, I think you just have to, uh, you to can rent kind of find something. snippets of it, but it's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's going to be one of those other ones. That's really hard to kind of dig for. Yeah. So a lot, I, I have to get that on. DVD but it's, when I find it's it. definitely worth it. If like if you're a fan of like Jason and the Argonauts and various other stop motion films in that genre, it's, it's a good film. Yes. The absolutely. three-headed dog was probably one of my favorite creatures out of that whole sequence, to be honest. Even though in, uh, it, it, it gets brutally killed, and it's like, no, <laughs> not the puppy, but yeah, that was cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one of my favorites out of there would be, well, Pegasus and also the owl. Um, I, I'm not sure oh, what they yeah, used with him. Right. He's, like a, he's like a little miniature. Uh, yeah, I the think. golden owl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. I'm smiling every time he came in the screen. I was like, what is this? Okay, it's like the one cute character this entire universe so far. I kind of like him. <laughs> yeah, so we're now, we're, we're moving through, we're moving through, we're down to number two. <laughs> What's your number two, Evan? The controversial one for me, Jurassic oh. Park. Oh, wow. Yeah, well. That's a beautiful film. It is a great film. And, uh I have mixed feelings, as I mentioned earlier about this one, (laughs) Mm because it was originally going to be in stop motion, which Mm -hmm. I would have personally loved to see. But at the same time, too, I think it was kind of in best favor overall that it did get that CGI because it was so, yeah, to this day, I think it still holds up very well, considering Mm -hmm. it was made in 1993. But like, it's just fantastic film like the bit the only thing i have a complaint about it i think at this point is the fact that it's more or less <laughs> <sighs> yeah the stop motion aspect just really hurts because they, they went so far with it and it was going to be the same guy that actually did the clash of titans uh, mm-hmm. it, that was the animator and stuff but yeah. they went through animated like sequence you can find clips of them too with and it's like it looks really cool but at the same time too it just doesn't quite hold up to that same caliber that the cgi did unfortunately right, right yeah. but i mean it was one of the first I can't, I, it was really young when i remember seeing it and it was one mm-hmm. of my first big movies and i was huge into dinosaurs so it was kind of one of those things i remember seeing the t-rex on the screen roaring and i was like okay Mom, <laughs> I have to see this film. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And I remember taking quite a bit of convincing, but it was definitely worth it. I remember just being instantly hooked on that. Like just and obviously there is a book and personally the mm-hmm. book is a lot longer, but so much better. And I would personally like to see almost if there is going to be a 
remake of that movie, I would mm-hmm. almost prefer it to be more more horror based and kind of more or less off what the book is giving off. It was already scary. What are you talking about? The, oh, and the book is even scarier. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Like, they they had to tone it down quite a lot. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like yeah. the opening scene for the book is this uh nurse is just hanging out in Costa Rica and this helicopter comes flying in in the middle of a storm, just extremely heavy weather. Like no one should be flying in this. And a bunch of these young construction worker guys that are all speaking Spanish to her and she's like a foreign student. So it's not her first language. Right. So she's just kind of tossed into this really hectic situation. And this guy basically is just clawed and gouged everywhere without trying to get too graphic with it either. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the book does a really good job of explaining those details to you. And they're just telling her it's a, it's an accident. It was a machine. It was a machine. And she's just looking over and, obviously you know having a medical background has seen animal maulings and recognizes this is not not a machine that would have done this to a person it's just the book the book is really really terrifying i think it would have been a more accurate interpretation of what it would have been like to bring Mm -hmm. these monsters back (laughs) so that's why i would personally like to see the 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 book get more nor notoriety than it definitely gets because it was one of those things that actually the movie came out before the book because a couple of producers caught wind of this book and they were like, Oh, I need to make a movie out of this. So he, yeah. he made a lot of money off that deal, obviously, but it, it was kind of like, well, it, I kind of wish I knew about the book far sooner than I did. Cause yeah, the, the book's just great. Mm-hmm. The film is obviously great too, especially for a younger audience. It get, gets you the spiel of things. And I think the big, big issue that people have with it nowadays is that the dinosaurs aren't accurate but it's Mm -hmm. like okay guys (laughs) think of it this way like the dinosaur films that you had before this were primarily all in stop motion which Mm -hmm. generally has that kind of janky unnatural movement that you were you know mentioning unfortunately before which is basically a cause of everything being a still image and not being actually you know moving in right. camera because when you're moving in a camera it causes a bit of motion blur and that gives it that unnatural movement but foreshadowing for our last topic here the stop motion did have a bit of a reply to that later on mm-hmm. but we'll save that for later so yes yeah the the big one for that is it's it, it was accurate for the time i think is right. the best way to put yes, it like because because be, before you just had these big slow lumbering lizards that are dragging their tails around and then jurassic <laughs> park came along yeah and now this thing is running after you <laughs> down in the jeep and you're trying to speed away from it like mm-hmm. that far far better interpretation than what was definitely you know shown before because yeah yes. everyone thought it was big slow lumbering monsters and we definitely know a lot more now. I could definitely rant on about dinosaurs forever, unfortunately, but <laughs> no, <laughs> this is not okay. a dinosaur podcast. So yes, but I still enjoyed the film. I, I, I fell in love with it when I saw it the first time. I think the and, puppetry work was just fantastic too. Yes, yeah. And uh, one of my favorite sequences I'd say would be the kitchen scenes mm-hmm. yep. uh, and, and the dinosaur exhibit. That one um, was I, actually done in stop motion. Yeah. Because of all the near misses, it was just a lot of suspense. Yeah. During during those scenes, and you know, we're wondering if the kids are going to be caught, and they're crawling through the, these crawl spaces, and and the dinosaurs that are creeping up on them, and they're hiding, and they're doing yeah, the tricks. sound effects, oh. precisely <laughs> Just, that too. Yeah, hearing this big lumbering dinosaur hissing and growling yeah. at you, yes. honestly, in the background. The near misses like, did it uh, for me because they're almost caught. That she's almost fallen. She's almost fell in their mouth. I mean, it's just like they were just snapping their teeth at her, and, and just all of the suspense. It was a, a lot, and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm on the edge of my seat. And, that was the book mm-hmm. was the book and the film are very similar for those scenes. Yes. I think the ones that you would really enjoy the pteranodon one and mm-hmm. the water chase scene from the book. Cause okay. yeah, the di- uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex goes for a swim and chases down the main characters. And that was yeah, <laughs> terrifying. Oh. Dinosaurs rule the earth. But uh, that's at the museum when the sign fell. Yeah. And, right and, at the end. Yes. Yeah. I, that was um that was a spot. I said, who who was responsible for that? They they're a freaking genius who did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, apparently just, that yeah, was going to be perfect. different too originally. Hey, yeah. like the, what they originally intended was basically uh, the main character to kill off the Velociraptor. I can't remember in some sort of like Rambo mm-hmm. heroic fashion. 
but yeah, the producer was like, I feel like, you know, we should probably, it's about the dinosaurs. We should probably highlight the Tyrannosaurus Rex just that one last time. And it's, yeah, probably one of the best decisions they've, <laughs> they made in the film personally, yeah. just that victory roar at the end. And yeah. I don't know. The banner coming the, across down. I don't know who gave perfect. the go for that. I don't know who gave the go if it was Steven Spielberg himself. Or... It was Steven Spielberg. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, he, well, he runs the show, so it's, <laughs> he has the last word. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, that, that was the right call for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is, it's a great film. And I think you can watch that on Amazon Prime if you have it. Uh, Jurassic Park. Yeah, the, right. the, the, the film that basically caused stop motion to go extinct. And quick fun fact, there is actually a mention of that right at the beginning of the film. When Alan Grant and uh, the guy that owns the, the camp, right, they're looking at the giant skeletons, they're going up the stairs. Because mm-hmm. uh, he's a paleontologist, right, Alan Grant, and he's... Mm-hmm obviously a big dinosaur nerd so he knows quite a bit about him and that's his main concern was that he's going to be basically out of a job now <laughs> he's yeah. like well it looks like i'm extinct and apparently that's what the stop motion animator saw upon seeing the cgi footage of the dinosaurs he's like well i guess i'm extinct now <laughs> yeah great I'm like, oh no I th- yeah i think everybody's seen jurassic park or just about everyone who's oh, a, yeah. especially a dinosaur fan they should definitely see it if they haven't all right. Well, so... you always have that new genre too with uh, mm-hmm. that continued on with the uh, Jurassic World, which eh, I mean, mm-hmm. it's not bad, but I think it's definitely does not hold up to what the original was, which is kind of why I would personally like to see like the book interpretation probably come out. Hmm. Well, that's something to look forward to. So we're now on to uh, my number two, which is James and the Giant Peach. And it is 1996 film, uh, adventure fantasy musical uh, based on a children's novel written by Roald Dahl. And it is a stop motion and live, it has stop motion and live, live action about a boy named James who is orphaned when his parents are killed by a rhinoceros. I know it's a little graphic, but you don't see all of that in the film. So if you're not worried, if you're worried. If you haven't seen it, it's not in there. Uh, he's treated rather cruelly by his aunts and finds solace in a pet spider. Eventually, he happens upon an enchanted peach and sets sail to New York City with, with his insect friends. I uh, just absolutely uh, love this film. It's way Such a strange up concept. My list. <laughs> way up the list. I know. It's just like it's. It's uh, th- there are elements that are fantastical. They're uh, very childlike. And then it's juxtaposed with a kind of, uh, I'd say, a lot of adult themes as well. Because yeah, it's, like of the, one of the, it's got a good mm-hmm. mixture of humors. Like it can tie to both audiences. Yes. Yeah. And I, I enjoyed all the characters. Uh, it was unique because of, I guess, the concept and the way the, uh, the, the stop motion, like all of the characters were, were made. Uh, I don't know. It's just um, every the flow. Was, was seamless from the from st- from stop motion to live action and vice versa uh, if, i guess it's uh, yeah that's one of the things that's captivated about is this, and this is a musical as well yeah and i know the, what you mean like that's probably mm-hmm. one of the films where they blended in those two forms of animation the best especially towards yes. the end at the new york city scene because yeah. yeah like because mm-hmm. he he would look both look like they were there Right, all of them, especially when, like, when you saw Mr. Centipede was floating down, and they were coming. He was probably one of my favorite characters. And then they were introducing all of them, and here is Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Ladybug, and Mrs. Glowworm, and Mr. Earthworm, and Miss Spider, and everybody, and they were taking a bow. And it, I don't know how they exactly. I know they stop motion, but it looks so real. You know what I mean? They look really real when they were talking back to the crowd and throwing things at at the at the aunts, and they oh, yeah. the spider wound them up wound the aunts up in a web it just looked really real and yeah but it's always it it it, it almost crept into my number one but uh my number one is another story uh um, not surprised because that that's definitely mm-hmm. yeah a very very classic film like yes. I, 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 tim burton did that one too i believe right mm-hmm. he was the director for that mm. I think he had something to do with it. Yeah, well, he, yes, he, he has a lot to do with a lot of the stop motion films. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it, 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 I, if I'm incorrect, it's definitely got that style for sure. Mm-hmm. 
Absolutely. Yeah, but Mrs. Ladybug is my favorite character. She's just the mother of the ship, basically. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good way to describe her. <laughs> <laughs> the mother of the peach. Uh, yeah, it's just a, you know, a lovely film. And Have you ever checked out the book for that one? I No, I haven't read it. I haven't read oh, okay. it, but I am familiar with it. I haven't read it. Uh, well, you know something? I I remember doing, yeah, once I you read brought it, that one up on your list, and yes. I was like, oh, there's a book? Okay, I yeah, didn't yeah. know this. No, I it was a book first. I, I yeah. did read it. I did read it, but it was a long time ago. So I needed to do a refresher and just to see what was so captivating. But for me, like, reading... It's a, it's yeah. a lot like Coraline, I think, is a good way to sum it up. Mm-hmm. The book is like they're very the interpretation is very close there mm-hmm. are some things that are obviously vastly different but book is far darker and scarier mm. all right well what's james and the giant peach and so now we come to our number one your number one <laughs> uh, stop motion film of all time which is the wrong trousers dun, dun. by ardman well, I, I think the appropriate theme would be da 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 da. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, the Wallace and Gromit theme has been permanently bur- burned within my brain, along with Sean the Sheep. <laughs> Sean the Sheep is cute. Oh, I, he's it, adorable. He, yeah, he was a spinoff of Wallace and Gromit. Actually, I don't know. Don't know if you know that one. Yes, I, yes, I'm familiar with Sean. I may not know his history, but I just know he's adorable, and I want one right now. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, I'm pretty sure they made a killing off the merchandise because yeah, I see a lot of him on Facebook. Um, which I'm gonna call it. I actually have the film here that it's a, a close shave was the film that he was first portrayed in mm. in the early '90s here. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the wrong trousers is probably one of my favorites. I gotta, I gotta mention a grand day out mm-hmm. as well, because that was the first one that uh, Nick Park ever actually produced. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think the only reason the wrong trousers kind of beats the the his first original film is more or less that one kind of ties everything together and had just a fantastic story and you got to see like both sides of the characters a lot more in comparison to say some of his other films like you got a lot from wallace you got a lot from gromit and it just it's very sad because you know he, this evil uh, have you seen the film out of curiosity wrong I, think, yeah, I remember you trying to hunt I for it i couldn't find yeah. it i couldn't okay. find it before I try not so to I'm spoil gonna, too much yeah i'm gonna have to yeah. i'm gonna have to watch it i'm gonna have to find it and watch it i don't know where but well yeah the problem the premise of it is, is uh Basically, uh, Wallace is making these uh, pair of trousers and he's using a lot of NASA technology because it's, you know, he's a bit of an inventor is basically kind of his character description. And he wants some extra cash in order to do this. So he basically rents out one of the rooms in his house and he rents it out to this penguin character, Mm -hmm. which just every time you see the penguin on screen, screen, he is... He's ominous. I don't know what it is. Those black little button eyes that just show no expression <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> He's blankly staring at you. He is very, very ominous character. Like I just love him. And uh he's he doesn't actually do very much, but mm-hmm. he's yeah, just um very what's a good way to describe him? Mm. Uh, unassuming, but you know, you know there's something there's more to him right? right at the very beginning of the film so as as time progressed here which i'm gonna call it obviously gromit is wallace's best his best friend man's best friend right mm-hmm. but he be- starts coming a lot closer to well you know the penguin character and grows you know further and further away from gromit unfortunately to the point where gromit basically he moves out there's a whole sad sequence for that it's probably like <laughs> terrible sequence i'm like no not the puppy dog because yeah i have a small zoo so (laughs) i'm very partial to animals (laughs) even if they're not real but basically he 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 runs away from home because of the whole situation he's just not happy unfortunately wallace doesn't really notice what's going on meanwhile this penguin in the background is kind of like starting to form this plot and obviously it's got it's got the trousers involved seeing (laughs) this uh, sounds like a comedy you know, <laughs> it, it kind of is it's a very very strange it's like it's got a lot of funny moments but it's also very suspenseful at the same time right. it's a 
it's a great film. That's why I think it made it to my number one, more or less. And it actually inspired to- Toy Story as well. Yeah. So, but um, kind of go on with the story, more or less. Mm-hmm. Um, call it. He he basically Gromit, Gromit ran away from home, and he's wandering down the street, all sad. He's got his little you know nap scat- sack of stuff and stuff. Which call it. He he looks into the window. Mm-hmm. And he sees this poster, and this poster is portraying Wanted, and it shows a chicken. And this chicken looks a lot like the penguin. Hmm. The only difference being is he's got this glove on his head, a rubber glove, and that's his little, you know, the thing that roosters have on top of their head. The scientific term is escaping me at the moment. But, yeah, that's his disguise. He just slaps on a rubber glove on top of his head, and that just adds to the comedy, personally, because... Apparently, that's all he needs to get away with in this world to, (laughs) you know, fool everyone pretty much. So uh, Gromit finds out that this roommate's obviously up to no good. He's a wanted felon and he's on the run, basically hiding out in Gromit's house. Mm. Meanwhile, the Penguin has his own little heist to basically rob this museum and use Wallace and basically essentially frame him Mm -hmm. (laughs) and try to get away with it, right? So... He ends up hijacking the trousers in the middle of the night. And there's a ton of like, (laughs) yeah, Wallace is in there, right? And he's just got this little control knob. He's like sitting on Wallace's stomach the entire time while climbing up this amazing wall. And I think that's part of the reason why I also made made it to the sequence. Just Mm -hmm. those uh, animations of all the gravity defying stunts that they were doing. I, I still don't really know how they did it. And I can only imagine how much of a nightmare that would have been to try and produce, especially when Wallace is hanging off the roof, walking towards the diamond. I was just like, uh, I, I guess you probably could flip the entire set upside down, mm-hmm. but that's just me thinking about it from a technical standpoint. If you, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. the sets. Yeah. The way the camera's positioned, it looks like it's upside down, but it's actually not. Mm. That's the only way I could really think about getting away with it because your floor base isn't actually moving. So, but I, I'll try not to drag on because yeah, I could talk forever about stop motion set sequence. But yeah, definitely one of my favorite stop motion films of all time. Yeah. So, awesome. plus there's a couple Easter eggs in that film as well, which I'm gonna call it. Have you ever seen Creature Comforts? Creature Comforts, I not in its entirety, no. No, okay, yeah, it's one of those hard ones to find too. Mm-hmm. It's got little snippets and yeah, stuff like that on YouTube, but, but yeah, it was it, another one of Nick Park's award-winning things. And apparently, the lion is actually in the museum. Oh, neat. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Wallace and Gromit, the wrong trousers. Honestly, any of the classic Wallace and Gromits are probably my favorite. I go back and watch those all the time. So yeah, well, I definitely will once I find it, and uh, I will give it a watch for sure. And I'll Netflix look. is probably a lot of people's best. It's hope not on Netflix. Of... I, I looked. It's not yeah. there. No, it's not on Netflix. Netflix is uh, Netflixing. It's where you can find a lot of the newer Ardman animations. That's for sure. Yeah, I, there I, are I, a lot obviously... there, but that one isn't. Yeah, it's not not a lot of the classics. I knew they were on there at one point, mm. but yeah, it's not. I, I I have hard copy VHS v- oh, VHS versions of these films, so. Yeah. yeah yeah that's I, I have the option of watching them whenever i want although uh, the, a couple of them are definitely yeah you can tell the tapes have been well loved <laughs> i like that term well loved yeah yeah the sound quality is not quite the same as it used to be but mm-hmm. that's okay yeah. <laughs> i still love it well we get to uh we go from wrong trousers to my number one and i think it might be on a lot of people's list and and that is the Star Wars original trilogy. Uh, so that is at my number one, starting with A New Hope. Well, a little bit of a Star Wars. I think everybody knows about Star Wars. Star Wars original trilogy began with Star Wars, A New Hope, the space opera written and directed by uh, His Excellency George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> In 1977. Okay, so the subsequent, subsequent sequence, uh, sequels uh, ensued, but uh, I'd say that um, a new hope. In watching a new hope, there aren't a lot of stop motion sequences in that particular film. There aren't. No, but there. I think the best one for mm-hmm. Star Wars would be uh, 
what a hey, you're more familiar with the series than I am. Yeah. So um, yeah, the one with the snow where yeah, the that's, that's that, walking around. Yeah, that's the Empire Strikes Back. But for first, yeah, that's correct. But yeah. for the A New Hope, it started with uh, it started with the the Jarek table, which is the, like the hollow chess. Uh, there's a it's aboard the Millennium Falcon. Uh, are you familiar? Do you, you remember oh, the that chess one? piece. Yeah. Yes, yes, hollow chess. <clears throat> Yeah. So uh, yeah, but you can actually mm-hmm. find that apparently. Like you can buy that chess set. Yeah. So a little bit about like the the movies. If no one on, on the planet has seen it, <laughs> <laughs> most people. You, you must live yeah. in a galaxy far, far, far away, away if you haven't seen it. <laughs> is a, a familiar story of the hero's journey that's shown through the life of Luke Skywalker. Well, me, I I wanted to focus more, I guess, specifically on the artistry of the films, told through the technology of stop motion, uh, which are few and far in between, especially in the first film, which is A, a New Hope. They, um, they use a lot of go motion. Yeah, the most yeah. apparent scene uh, utilizing stop motion in New Hope, it happens aboard the Millennium Falcon while traveling to Tatooine to Alderaan, or Alderaan, however you want to pronounce it, with Chewbacca and R2-D2 are playing at the Jajaric table or the J- the. Dejeric, D-E-J-A-R-I-K. If you want to know how that's spelled, then you can use Wikipedia or you can check in the show notes <laughs> later on. <laughs> also known as Hollow I, I love that scene, especially when uh, C-3PO just gives uh, R2-D2 the warning. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if you, he, you beat him, he's probably going to rip you apart. Yeah, he said, you let him win or he's going to tear your arm off or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he just lays back like all nonchalant like yeah that's right <laughs> yeah and so apparently according to uh legends whatever there the, the, there's a lot of rules involved with hollow chess i don't have all the rules for hollow chess i just wanted to focus on that particular scene uh in which the team they they have teams uh, holographic creatures that compete against each other on teams and that's that scene uh so it's shown that when they go into alderaan and then it, the scene pops up again just very briefly after uh, Obi Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader have a fight, oh. and uh, who's sorry that? if you can hear he, my dog German Shepherd's uh, got a toy, so uh, sorry to your audience if you can hear some <laughs> weird Chewbacca noises. <laughs> hey, you giving into the sound effects, sweetie? <laughs> I love it. Life happens. I love it. Okay, so that is that one. Oh, what was I saying about that? Yeah, about. Um, yeah, so he, yeah, Obi Wan was well. He disappeared, uh, uh, went into the the nether world of the Force. Uh, we can say that Vader killed him, but I think he just he just slipped away. Anyways, Luke was reflecting on it, and he was at the table again, and so that the Jarek table is where he was, and so that the se- sequence again. But that's about it for that. So we're moving on to uh, the Empire Strikes Back, which is uh, the second installment. Um, that one's my personal. I love oh, that that's one. my one of my favorite movies of all time. Period. Not just for Star Wars film. Yeah, you know, uh, it was so entertaining, and it continues to be entertaining. I'm always finding something new in it. Well, in the first scene, clearly articulated with stop motion, we see Luke Skywalker riding on the back of a bipedal animal known as a Tauntaun. So that was, and he was yeah right, that that's the go motion there. scene that yeah. I hinted to earlier, mm-hmm. which is yeah I I personally never knew anything about that. And I mm-hmm. remember hearing that for the first time, and I'm like, what, what what's the difference between go motion and stop motion? I don't mm-hmm. quite understand this. Mm-hmm. And that brings us back to the whole motion blur effect, basically, right? Because right. stop motion is just a bunch of pictures that you're essentially taking. So there's no motion blur because nothing is effectively actually most moving you're basically just giving the appearance of motion and basically the idea behind go motion is basically you're doing stop motion in a traditional fashion you have your puppet and you're moving it around very slowly taking you know however many frames you're working at usually it's two and 24 so you take two pictures every 24 frames equals up to one second The only difference here is, is the entire platform that Mm -hmm. your doll is standing on actually moves. Right. Okay. So essentially what happens is it's on like a little treadmill for lack of a better description. So they'll, they'll play with the doll, get it in the next position. And then once it's there, basically the little track system launches it forward, Mm -hmm. giving it the appearance of that it's actually moving because then the camera will 
is set on a timer to take a you know picture at a certain t- point when it reaches and you just have to program that for each time giving it the appearance that it's actually moving which i personally just thought was like really cool and a little disappointing i'm like i don't know how i would ever personally do that but maybe one day because <laughs> yeah I, I thought that was really cool and then i because if you go over the stop motion footage in that <clears throat> excuse me uh mm-hmm. film in particular you can definitely tell it's not it, mm-hmm. there's something a little bit different about yes, it it's yes, not absolutely. not exactly the, the same same quality it's almost you could do almost mistaken it just for puppetry work right yeah, you can tell it's different. And I noticed that right away, even seeing older films, when I saw this for the first time, I knew there was something different about it. I mean, there's a lot of things that were different about it. But uh, yeah, that particular uh, sequence, he's on the, the Taunton, uh, he's on the ice world of Hoth, and, and then he battles with, uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, Han Solo finds him in the snow. And, the big uh, Yeti character? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he <laughs> for lack gets of a better there. description yeah. at the moment. And um, and Han Solo saves him and takes him to, to base camp. But that, that just starts it all. But in the second scene, I think that's one of the, for me, one of the greatest uh, and most exciting stop motion sequences in cinematic history. This is my five cents, though. My cinco centavos. And referring- the the mm-hmm. AT-ATs, the big oh, Imperial yeah. walkers, yeah. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm referring to that. The, the climatic Battle of Hoth, battle involved in Imperial invasion by Vader um, against the Rebel Alliance is what happened. The all-terrain armored transports, also known as AT-AT or AT-AT walkers. The, the yeah, four those, are, leg- those are so cool. I love those. Yeah, four-legged behemoths. Uh, and they were destroyed by s- snow speeders. But anyway. Have you ever seen how that uh, those scenes were made? Yes, I yes I did. Oh, I, a so number cool. of times, and it's still I'm just still fascinated by that. No matter how many times I see it, it's like okay, well, we, yeah, it's just amazing what they did with them, just building them in general. But they did. I love seeing the dude mm-hmm. pop out of the little trap door. <laughs> 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 just, <okay. laughs> what? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's the, the composite, I guess, of the live action and motion control articulates all of them together. It's just like. They just make it work into something so seamless, and the, it was just yeah the way it's orchestrated. Just really, it's a, it's a marvel to to behold the way it was done, and that's what makes it so entertaining because it's like like nothing else you've seen before, you know. And I'm still fascinated by the film, but that uh, the the battle and the, how they're walking and I saw the behind the scenes that they you know kind of like recorded elephants and on you know, their joint the movements. Oh, oh yeah they fashion okay. that actually makes a lot of sense yeah they fashioned them to to walk like to walk like uh to walk like elephants and huh. they, they created them that way and they had a lot of iterations of of these of of, of the uh manufacturing of these creatures no not creatures they're they're uh, machines basically but they're uh designed to to walk and act like mach- like a creature um but anyway that was something great because it's just the interaction. They're, they're, they're flying the speeders through and around the legs and above and beyond. And they're almost, they're smashing things. And uh, it's just a lot of action in, in, in those scenes. And uh, one of my favorite, like I said, in cinema, cinematic history for me. All right. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more though. Cause yeah, like mm-hmm. just great, great. I, I love uh, watching the, the imperial walker fall every time i just mm-hmm. like oh that's so great watching the snow speeder just loop around and it. they win that's the thing they win yeah because they tied think, them up they wound them up around there and then the legs and they were toppling they figured out how to how to destroy them and you know that was a, a fail and there was a lose for for that for that team they will win for this team and they, they lost lost for the other yeah and i love that so they get to win. It's one of the few times that the, the Alliance get to, to, to win anything. <laughs> De- yeah, definitely. Like uh, it, as far as like film and animation goes too, mm-hmm. like that was probably like their best sequence of like kit bashing with their mm-hmm. toys, in my opinion, out of them all. I just, yeah. Yes. Great, great work. Like the, the trap door personally is what really sells it for me. Every time, <laughs> every time I see the ATAT walking across the, the snow bank, I just can't help but think, yeah, there's a dude under there just going boop, boop. <laughs> Yeah, then then the uh, well, imagine the, trying to describe your work your <laughs> work day to someone here at that point. How was your day at work? Well, I was hiding underneath a snowbank, playing with a giant robot, no, popping out from underneath the trap door. You no, know what? He's getting paid. He's getting paid, so it's all good. 
Exactly. And he's uh, probably right. making pretty good money doing it. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Then, so after Empire was The Return of the Jedi, which came out in 1983, and that was the last installment in the trilogy. Uh, it has two significant stop motion segments that I could recall. The first takes place on Tatooine at Jabba's Palace. Uh, when Luke Skywalker tries to rescue his friends, he, he looks for Han, Leia, and Chewie, and he comes face to face with with uh, with Jabba. And uh, well, he thinks he's going to win, but Jabba had another plan, and he ends up in the the pit with a rancor. And this is big. Reptilian. The rancor is probably one of my yeah. favorite characters, even though it's got the least amount of screen time. It, but mm-hmm. it looks like a giant, yeah, cross between a dinosaur and Godzilla. So that's yeah, yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's big and scary, and you were wondering like, what is he going to do? How is he going to get rid of it? I was thinking uh, the first time I saw it, like, oh, is he going to use the force to you know snap its neck or something? But that didn't happen. Um, but yeah, but according to Star Wars canon, it's a semi sentient reptilian carnivore native to the planet mm. of Dothomir is, is what that would, would be. But uh, within that sequence, uh, they would have used uh, creature, uh, like puppetry, high-speed puppetry is what they call it. So it's like yeah. stop motion, but it's, like, it's a stop motion uh, mechanism that they use, but they, they yeah, incorporate like the puppetry with it. So it was something interesting it's... and different. More or less than kind of controlled by like a machine than an actual person is basically right. kind of what you're getting at. Right. So not like, missing. okay. Right. So instead of it being like a person's hand, they they um, they have a way to mechanize it uh, for that for that to happen. Yeah. Pretty neat. Anyway, what they were doing with this with this film, I mean, with these films in general, was they were coming up with new technologies to make the film. Things that had never been done. Things that had never been built. I honestly they didn't were, know about that, about the Rancor. That makes me kind of respect it that much more, to be honest. Yeah. That was, yeah, that's really cool. Cause there's like, that reminds me a lot of what Leica did. Uh, uh, Q- Kubo, I think is mm-hmm. the stop motion yeah. film. I'm not sure if you've seen that one. Yes. I they did. had, yeah, they had a massive, like 400 pound skeleton stop motion doll. That was just completely controlled by robot arms, apparently. And I was like, Oh wow. That is like incredible. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, so that is the the the, the rancor. It, it, obviously, Luke Luke fig, figures out a way to kill him, like he always does. He used the force, <laughs> and he <laughs> uses his brains because yeah, he was able to kill that off, and that was that. But the other, I guess, the last noteworthy type of sequence uh, that would have been employing the use of stop motion, I think it transpires on the forest moon of Endor. We find these cute little creatures called Ewoks. <laughs> 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 and, I love the Ewoks. I mean, I, I probably part of the reason why I have a pug, which I'm pitting right now. Hey, foo foo. Oh. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> you look at an Ewok. Tell me that uh, the person didn't see oh get their goodness. inspiration from a pug, right? <laughs> I don't know. I just knew they were adorable and, and they're the cutest little things in the world. Oh, but, so um, smushed in little faces for me. I'm yeah. not sure about that. <laughs> and they're nice and furry and they're adorable. I mean, even when they're fighting, they're cute. <laughs> 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 even when they're angry. My, my, I want more. Yeah. But um. Yeah, so the with the speeder uh, on the planet, they oh had, yeah, that's a that's mm-hmm. a good one, yeah. Yeah, they had some scenes where they used miniatures. Well, they had the well, they had the actors live action, the actors, and then they had with the, not a blue screen. Um, anyways, then they had uh, miniatures. I think and it would have been yeah. They did a lot of blue screen work yeah. more than green screen green work for right. that. Just and, because of the color interpretations, usually it's a lot easier to kind of cut away with dark ambient backgrounds to mm-hmm. go with a blue screen as opposed to a green screen. Me being a film nerd, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. You, yeah. you do stop motion, so you know a lot of these things, right? And so that yeah. So but there was a particular walker <clears throat> that they had used, and he kind of stumbled over logs. And that was a stop motion sequence and it took them, it was I, I, like, from what I know, they had, uh, it was painstaking the amount of time it took just to do that, just to get it's, it right. Yeah. The two, anything with two legs in that stature, is, it's very, going back to my dinosaur nerd uh, <laughs> preferences, it's much mm-hmm. like a theropod in that sense. Like it's mm-hmm. very, very top heavy and there's not a lot of support for the feet and it's just a nightmare to deal with in that aspect. So I can understand why that was probably a very difficult sequence, yeah. but it did pay off. It looked really cool. Yeah, because it, it had to topple, so it had to like act as if it was tripping like it was an actual person, and they were different. Yeah, so it was a lot that went into it. So even though it's a very, very small piece of a, a scene that incorporated, 
the stop motion, I thought it was of note because it was, you know, it took them a long time and those animators deserve to. Yeah, very difficult, you know. especially especially when you're dealing with a character or organism or ro- mm-hmm. robot in that stature. Because mm-hmm. it's, yeah, the, I think the best way to describe it is for any sort of creature animation, it's hard to kind of think about how these things would be moving sometimes. Right. B- because you don't necessarily have a direct interpretation you know what i mean like it's Mm -hmm. you kind of have to decide how this thing would move or what sort of thing would move like it to kind of compromise for it It, it's a weird middle ground to kind of reach i find which sometimes i also struggle with a bit but i I, yeah for something like that i could definitely see that being very challenging especially especially on the tripping part because yeah I, i remember that kind of looking back on that scene a little bit you can kind of see a little bit of jank there but yeah yeah, but it was yeah. This just added to the the overall film. Definitely exactly. having that scene there, and if it, yeah, I mean, especially the, seeing it getting squished by the two logs, that was perfect. Yes, yeah, and so that was basically it. I mean, but those films were worthy to, for me of being mentioned because it's, yeah, I love those films. And uh, oh, I, I mean, sequences. everybody personally loves those films. Like, yes. how, how could you not realistically? Yeah, so we're at the we're at the end of our. I'm surprised you never mentioned Yoda. <laughs> Yoda is, I don't know, Yoda. They use, they use puppets for him. Yeah, they did use yeah primarily puppets for him, but I mean yeah. the puppetry work for that is also just. Yes, hello, Holly. <laughs> just, <laughs> just just amazing, <laughs> just amazing. Like I because like it's. He's a very, very, very interesting character in that sense, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because nobody was doing that kind of style, like, bef- no, you know what I mean? They had no reference for it. And the fact that they're using these fancy animatronics and the way he speaks, too, I just love it. He right. was one of yeah. the be- better design characters, for sure. For sure. But I mean, I didn't mention because it was a, they didn't really use stop motion or something. You know, I would love to, to mention Yoda, but... <laughs> But anyways, so we're at the end of it, just like that. And it was so much fun. Yeah, um, I went by a lot faster than I expected. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you're having fun, time flies, especially when you're talking about cool, cool movies that everybody mm-hmm. kind of enjoys. Like, uh, yeah, I don't think any one of these, if you, anyone's out there and wants to go see them, I don't think, yeah, if you want to go through a big movie marathon, you definitely wouldn't be disappointed by any of these. Definitely not. And uh, Star Wars is available on Disney Plus and everywhere else, I suppose. You can find it uh, DVD, Blu-ray, uh, you know, collector's edition. <laughs> Behind the scenes. I, I, all I'm pretty it. sure there's a never-ending list of collectibles for that at this oh, point. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. All right, Evan. So that was great having you. And I'm sure you will be back again. So we'll, we can do something fun again. Yes, definitely looking forward to next time. This was this was a fun episode in particular. Even though in it, it, I had to bring up the, you know, one of my favorite films that generally kind of killed the thing that I love, which <laughs> <laughs> this is like, oh, I, I, I don't want to give you this spot, but at the same time, too, it's such a great film. I can't not do it. <laughs> and where can folks find you? Oh, um, you can find me over at Moose Motion on YouTube and which I'm gonna call it Facebook as well, under the same name as well as Instagram. The only difference there would be a underscore between the moose and the motion. But YouTube is probably best the best place to get. That's where you're gonna get all the animations first and various other, you know, deep dives on dinosaurs and Godzillas and various other monsters that I like to create. Awesome. All right, Evan. That's a wrap. Awesome. You are listening to Journaling with PT. Happy New Year, everyone. This is the first, this was the first recording for 2024. And thank you for joining us. Evan Folk of Moose Motion Studios and myself as we counted down our top five stop motion films of all time we appreciate you and your listening ears follow evan at moose motion studios his information is in the show notes follow the podcast subscribe reach out to me if 
you want to list your top five, we'd love to hear it. And you can do so at ptrussell.com. And as always, please stay tuned. Take care.